Brian Bourne is here for some analysis. He's the former chief of public policy at the Institute of Economic Affairs in the UK. He's currently at the Cato Institute here in Washington. Uh, welcome to our program, Ryan. Good to be with you. Let's talk about this vote tomorrow. It's on the divorce, not on the political declaration. So what about the political declaration? When is that going to be discussed and resolved? Well, the political declaration already has been discussed somewhat um, in Parliament this week. We had a lot of indicative votes run by backbench MPs. The problem is they couldn't agree on any form of future relationship that they, they want with the EU. There was no majority for anything. Um, so what the government's tried to do now is divorce the, the instance of leaving from that political declaration, from all of those potential options, as a way of trying to kind of shoehorn everybody to get in behind the deal. The problem is it really doesn't look like they've still got the numbers there, even for the withdrawal agreement. Would, would it have to come to this point if Prime Minister Theresa May had not offered to step down? Well, I think offering to step down uh, was a useful step on her part. There are a lot of MPs who simply don't trust her to take forward Brexit in the longer term in a direction that they'd and be keen that, on. And by that, Ryan, I mean this third vote in Parliament tomorrow. Would that have happened if Theresa May had not said, you know what, I'm going to leave and you guys figure this out? Well, this third vote always had to happen this week under the terms that the UK had agreed for the extension with the EU. The EU really wants us to leave by the 22nd of May, and to trigger that new deadline, we have to pass the withdrawal agreement as soon as possible. Now, if that withdrawal agreement isn't passed tomorrow, then officially the UK will be set to leave the EU on the 12th of April. Now, MPs then face a huge headache. Do they ask for another extension from the EU? Are they willing to accept a no-deal exit? Or do they revoke Brexit entirely? From the votes we've seen this week, nobody seems clear as, where, as to where we go if this gets rejected tomorrow. Have you ever seen anything like this? We talked to one expert yesterday, and he said we are in uncharted territory here. We are certainly in uncharted territory, and uh, I have no idea what happens if this gets rejected uh, tomorrow. It does look like there could be a general election, but if you've got lots of Brexiteers that actually don't support Theresa May's deal, how are they going to stand under an election banner, under a Conservative banner, um, pushing that deal as part of a manifesto? It's very, very difficult to see what a general election resolves. But as it stands, the lack of a conservative majority means it's almost impossible to get business through the House of Commons. And what do you make of the fact that they were debating, the MPs were debating and voting on eight alternative plans, none of them produced a majority? I mean, what a complete waste of time. I think it was a waste of time. Uh, look, the Ho House of Parliament, the backbenchers have for a long time been saying that the government haven't been working with the House to find a consensus. They had eight different options yesterday, including no deal, including a second referendum, including revoking um, uh, Article 50 entirely and staying within the EU, and including lots of other options to tack on to the withdrawal agreement for the longer term relationship with the EU. They rejected every single one of those. And actually, it looks like when you look at the, the people that have defected towards Theresa May's deal in the, uh, the last couple of days, it looks like that now, now, even though that doesn't have a majority, it's the most popular of all of these options. And what about uh, Theresa May politically? Is she done? Well, I think it all depends on whether this deal gets passed. She has implicated that if this deal goes through tomorrow, she will resign such that another Conservative can take forward the second stage of the negotiations. And if it doesn't? Now, if it doesn't, then it seems likely to me that either we'll have a long extension and her position will be untenable, or we'll have a general election. I think there'll be a lot of Conservatives who would not want Theresa May leading them into that election. We'll leave it there. Brian Bourne, thank you so much.